everyone, I'm Cassidy. I'm Brandon. I'm Lexi. I'm Carly. And I'm Liz. Today we're going to be going over the correlation of our research between degree choices and financial well-being. So starting off, I'm going to go over the introduction, and that's going to go over our research objectives and statistics. Next, we're moving into our literature review, which is going to be going over the earning disparities across majors. Then we'll be hopping into financial well-being and the specific definitions of financial well-being. Heading into our variables and survey idea, discussing our hypothesis, independent and dependent variables. And lastly, going over our survey plan and the introduction, structure, and recruitment process. So I will be going over the introduction and I'm going to go through our stats, research objectives, and factors of 10. Starting off with some quick facts here. So 51% of college students are not confident in their chosen career path. A lot of incoming freshmen don't do research on their majors before they pick them and don't look at the futures of the job market upon their graduation. Another quick fact here is that 9.24% is the increase in tuition cost within the last 10 years. A lot of college students also don't consider the return on the investment based on the major that they pick and that this is going to increase a lot in Two-thirds of college students feel overwhelmed when selecting a major because oftentimes they don't plan for how much money that they're going to need to make to make a living once they're graduating. So this leads into my last point here, which is 69% of college students use money as a motivator for selecting a major. Students have to learn how to plan for their retirement, their 401ks, if they want to have a family, a car, kids, etc. So our main research objective here is to analyze the relationship between selected major and financial well-being. So breaking this down, we have a few factors we're going to be examining. For starters, the definition of financial well-being. Financial well-being can have several different meanings, but overall, it's a student's mental health combined with the amount of money in their bank account. Some students are going to be a lot more stressed than others based on knowing how much money they have, what bills they need to pay, their credit card statements. Our next factor the earning potential of various courses of study. So we're going to be talking about how students that are majoring in the College of Business or in STEM fields are more likely to make higher starting salary than students in social sciences or fine arts majors. And lastly, understanding of how academic choices impact financial well-being. So this is going to lead to, with your major starting salary, you're going to want to end up making enough money to make a living for the rest of your life. Once you're in a career cluster, you're kind of stuck there and you're not going to be able to venture out and go to a different career path if you major in a social science to get the business starting salary. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about the literature review and kind of the two main points that I'm going to be hitting is the importance of your major and the cost of education. So on the next slide is the importance of your major. Now you may be thinking, what does the importance of your major have to do with anything? Well, we have kind of two examples here. Business majors, through their coursework, they acquire financial concepts, accounting principles, and economic theories. While somebody like a performing arts major, they might, be, they might not be necessarily taking a lot of business classes, finances, finance classes, so they might not know how to do their taxes or any kind of personal finances nearly as well. And Amit Kishay from CBS News reports, performing arts majors are typically underemployed, and this may make securing a position in their chosen field more challenging. This presents another issue, as traditionally, performing arts majors do not make nearly as much money as a lot of the other sorts of education, such as business majors, and performing arts is kind of stuck in one little kind of box, while business majors, no matter in whether it's STEM, nursing education, there always is business in a specific major. While performing arts, that's kind of all you got there, so the salaries of supply and demand kind of aren't there for performing arts. Now for the next slide, you kind of got the financial upside. According to Morgan Strand and Muscat on this slide right here, some students do not feel like there's value in majoring in something that does not have a major financial upside. <clears throat> Traditionally, what a lot of our parents, I know my parents told me is you just gotta do something that you love. While unfortunately in today's day and age, that's not reality. What you kinda have to factor in is the financial upside based on what your kind of career makes. That's why unfortunately education, kind of when you think of elementary education is kind of going downhill just because the pay is not there. And but then we got good news for engineering students. An article by Best Colleges claims engineering majors are earning, or they earn the highest early career salaries immediately after graduation, making between $65,000 and $75,000. And that is according to NOM and CBS. Now on our last slide, there is no guarantees. 
Just because you're an education major doesn't mean you're not gonna make a lot of money. Just because you're an engineering major doesn't mean you are gonna make a lot of money. It kind of matters by person and your kind of skill level and kind of commitment that you put towards your time. No matter what the reported salary for one's chosen degree is, money is not made until the job position is secured. A lot of people I kind of hear walking around saying, I'm gonna be a doctor someday, I'm gonna make a lot of money, I'm gonna be an education major, I'm not gonna make a lot of money. As I said before, that's not true until you have a position secured. And next, it is, in, it is important to consider a degree with a high demand job field. Kind of as I talked about before, supply and demand. There's a lot of business jobs out there, there's not a lot of performing arts theater jobs. And the last point that I wanna make is the career one picks may have a large impact on financial well-being. That's gonna kinda tie everything that I talked about together between the kind of knowledge you have and the kind of money you'll be making. That's gonna kinda dictate what financial well-being you will have. So next, I'm gonna jump in, never mind. We're gonna have Liz jump into financial well-being. <laughs> so looking into financial well-being here, as Carly said earlier, our research objective is to analyze how do these majors and choice of majors affect the financial well-being. And so with this, we will be using the assessment tool of a scoring sheet. It's brought by the Melbourne Institute. And to kind of score that and that mechanism there, we'll be using a Likert scale, which is zero to four, four being the highest level of agreement. And then calculating that, we're going to be adding those up and then multiplying by 10 because there's 10 questions. So it kind of gives us a percentage to look at. And then to assess the validity of data, then that would be just kind of clearing out and getting rid of irrelevant information. All right, actually next, I'm gonna be going over our survey idea and our variables that are impacting our research. I'll go over the hypothesis, independent, dependent variables, and our survey methods. First off, I'll start with my hypotheses. These are really based off our research objective of analyzing the relationships between a selected major and financial well-being. It also has a lot to do with what Brandon said in our literature review, how certain majors are more likely to be exposed to financial topics like business majors. So that brings us to our first hypothesis, is that students in a business-related program will have a higher financial well-being. And then our next hypothesis is similarly related to that, that students that are business majors are more likely to possess personal investment accounts. And this also ties to investment accounts having an effect on financial well-being. To go into our variables, I'll just give you guys a quick definition of independent and dependent variables. I know you've heard them a million times, but I just want to clarify. Independent variable is what we expect to influence the dependent variable, and the dependent variable is what we measure as a result of the independent variable. So I'll start off. Our independent variables are the degree choice of our participants, or just our variable period, not degree. But we do have two dependent variables, and that's financial well-being, which we will calculate, like Liz said, and our, our, our participants' possession of personal investment accounts. So here are just some examples of what our questions will look like on our survey. It'll look a little bit different for this Likert scale. It's just this looks more aesthetically pleasing. So that's why I put it up here. Um, but it'll be questions like, I enjoy my life because of the way I'm managing my money, and they'll range on a scale of zero to four. An example of how we're gonna collect our data for major choice, we're gonna have a closed-ended question just because we don't want people to put garbage as an answer. We don't want, yeah, basically we just don't want garbage as an answer. So it's gonna be closed-ended. We tried to account for all the different types of programs here at NMU. And then finally, to ask if people have investment accounts, we're just gonna simple yes or no. We don't wanna go into the complexities of what types of investment accounts people have, because that might muddy our research. And we're also gonna provide examples of different types of investment accounts in case students are not familiar with what investment accounts are or what they entail. I'm gonna be going over the survey plan. We're taking from a population of young adult consumers and our sample is gonna be full-time and part-time NMU students who are over 17 and under 27. Parts of the survey include an introduction that briefly goes over what is, what's part of our survey, and then this is also where they're gonna be consenting to take the survey. Any participant is able to click out of the survey if they do not want to participate in it and all the answers will be erased. And the introduction will also include some of our contact information in case you have any questions during while you're taking the survey. And lastly, at the end of it, we'll have demographic questions just so we can kind of get a feel for the people who are answering our survey. To recruit 
our participants, we're going to do a small booth in Jamrich to get people who are taking their classes, who are sitting in the study rooms and studying, who may have a little time to take our survey. We're also going to be posting on social media to get a wider audience. So everyone who wasn't in Jamrich that day, they also have a choice to participate in our survey. We're going to be sharing via email just to, if, in case we want to send it to specific people, we can send that through email through a link. And then lastly, we're gonna be doing a poster with a QR code and we're gonna be hanging them up and giving them to professors so students can fill out before class. Our incentive is a $25 Amazon gift card. Our eligibility will be if you're eligible to take the survey, which is over 17 and under 27. And we're gonna be sharing the winner via email. So looking at the conclusion here, all in all, as we've seen from other groups today, that financial well-being plays a big role in overall well-being, and then the choice of major can then also play into that in a big way. And looking at tuition costs and career aspects, tuition costs, you know, they're rising, and you have to factor in a lot of other things and career aspects, um, like what's the, um, well, how much are you gonna pay in that field, what's the uh, earning potential, and you know, what's the stability in that field and in those jobs. So looking at academic choices and financial well-being, we feel that you know maybe business-related majors may know a little bit more, feel more confident in their finances. Like a business-related major may have a personal investment account, and some other majors may not. So our implications for students, all in all, is that if you have a business-related major or something you know aside from other majors, as Brandon showed um, some of those statistics there, that there's a lot of factors into financial being, but a major choice of that is a huge role. Thank you.